This video is for section 7.6, Exponential Functions. Our goal is that we can evaluate and graph exponential functions. And just to start you off with some encouragement, this lesson is much easier than the previous couple. So stay tuned and focus and we'll get through it together. Let's define what an exponential function is. Look at the key concept box here. An exponential function is a function of the form y equals a b to the x, where a cannot be zero, b must be greater than zero, and it cannot equal one. Lastly, x is a real number. Here's two examples in the pictures. Uh, we have y equals two to the x. You can see it's a positive two, so it's gonna be going up like that. Then in the bottom, we have y equals negative two to the x. And when it's a negative number, the exponential function is always going to be looking like that. A couple other ones on the right side, we have 1 half to the x. And that is a fraction, so it's going to be going down like that. And lastly, if it's a negative 1 half to the x, then it's going to be reverse or flipped. So very similarly to the left side, they look about the same. Okay, let's talk about the difference between a linear function, which is what we've been looking at most of this year, and now let's talk about an exponential function. So all, let's suppose that all the x values in a table have a common difference. Common difference just means, you know, if there, it's like 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, the common difference would obviously be 2. And we talked about this with sequences in the past, so d would be 2. If all of the y values have a common difference as well, uh, then it would be a linear function. So an example of this with a table would be 1, 2, 3, and then 3, 6, 9. The common difference, there's a plus 1 common difference in the right, or sorry, the left side for the x's, plus 1. And then on the right for the y's, it's plus 3. So both the x and the y values have a common difference, therefore this is linear, aka when you graph it, it's a line. Now, something that's going to be new for us right now, I think you've seen this in the past, but new as in right now, is that if the y values have a common ratio, then the table represents an exponential function. Ratio means you're multiplying by a number instead of adding over and over again. So an example of this would be 1, 2, 3, and then 2, 4, 8. Um, because how this works is just 2, 2 times 2, and 2 times 2 times 2. So this equation would be an exponential function. It would be like this, 2 to the x power. And obviously that will not be linear because the x is not right next to that 2, it's in the exponent. Let's look at some examples. Problem 1, does the table or equation represent a linear or exponential function? And remember, if you see the word rule, that just means equation. Same exact thing. So, part A. Here's the table. Let's figure out what the difference is or the pattern in the x row, it's just going up by 1, so that is the common difference of 1. And now in the y row, we are multiplying by 3 each time. We are not adding or subtracting. So the ratio between each value, y value, is 3, so therefore we have an exponential function. Now let's focus on part B y equals 3 times x. This is a linear function for sure, and the reason why is because the x is not an exponent. It's just a regular variable next to the coefficient. Okay, let's look at the got it right below this in your notes for a few more little examples and then we'll move on to the next problem. We have a table 1, 2, 3, 4 is going up by 1, which is awesome, plus 1 each time. And now to get each y value, you have to add 2. So that means this is a linear function because we are adding or subtracting by the same number in the y row. Okay. 
And on the right side, y equals 3 times 6 to the x. The x is an exponent, so this is an exponential function because it is in the form of y equals a times b to the x. And I'm hoping that you have been able to make the connection um, that the word exponent is in the word exponential. So that's kind of a dead giveaway that there has to be an exponent involved. Come on. Okay. So yes, there must be an exponent in the equation in order for it to be an exponential function. Example two, here comes the real life application. Um, this is for all you beetle lovers out there. I know a lot of people don't like beetles, but here we go. Suppose 30 flower beetles are left undisturbed in a warehouse bin. The beetle population doubles each week. The function f of x equals 30 times 2 to the x power gives the population after x weeks. How many beetles will there be after 56 days? So this is basically just a plug-in problem, but it's not like super easy. It's just kind of a little bit easy. You'll see what I mean in a second. Let's rewrite the equation that they gave us. Remember, this is in function form. We have looked at function form in the past. Um, and I'd like to remind you that it's just telling you that the x is going to be the input. The input. It's not f times x, it's called f of x. So x is going to be input, and whatever is the answer is the output. Now that x right there is where we're going to put in the input value. Please take a look that the problem talks about weeks. x is the number of weeks. Now, when they gave us the number at the end of the problem, they gave it to us in days. So we need to figure out how many days are in a week, and therefore, how many weeks are in 56 days? Well, I think that we all know that there's seven days in a week. So that means in order to figure out how many weeks, you just divide by seven. So that means we get eight weeks. So that is the number that we're going to plug in. We're going to evaluate the function for x equals eight. And the eight came from right there. So that means we're plugging in the eight. So the eight goes in the x spot on the left and also the x spot on the right. So we have 30 times 2 to the 8th. 2 to the 8th is 256. And lastly, we just need to multiply by 30 and we're going to get 7,680. So after 56 days, there will be 7,680 beetles. Now let's talk about how to graph one of these functions. We have the equation y equals 3 times 2 to the x. Wow, that definitely should be an exponent. 2 to the x. And now we also have a table given to us. So let's use the values negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And like in the past, we're just plugging these x values in. So we get 3 times 2 to the negative second, which means we are doing 3 times 1 over 2 to the second, which means 3 times 1 fourth. Lastly, we know that that number is 3 fourths. So the coordinate points can be negative 2, 3 fourths. Let's plug in the negative 1 now. 3 times 2 to the negative first, which means we're doing 3 times 1 half, which equals 3 halves. So our next coordinate points can be negative 1, comma, 3 halves. Plugging in 0, this is a nice one, 3 times 2 to the 0. Hopefully you can remember that when you raise anything to the 0 power, you get a 1. So 3 times 1 is 3. 0, comma, 3. Plugging in 1, y equals 3 times 2 to the 1st, which is 3 times 2, and that's 6. 1, comma, 6. And lastly, y equals 3 times 2 to the 2nd, which equals 3 times 4, and that is 12. 2 comma 12. Let's plot those points on our given graph. First one is negative 2, 3 fourths. So this would be 2, this would be 1, 
Three fourths is a little bit more than halfway up. It's quarter of three quarters of the way. Now negative one is going to be one and a half because that's what three halves equals. Zero, three, one, six, and two, twelve. So you can see that this is obviously not a linear function because it's not going to be graphing as a line. This is an exponential curve. Okay, here's one more application problem and we will be done. Computer mapping software allows you to zoom in on an area to view it in more detail. Um, an example of this that we use a bunch is Google Maps. And something that's kind of out of style now is uh, MapQuest and stuff like that. So Google Maps is the primary um, application that we can see that the computer software is being used for. The function f of x equals 100 times 0.25x to the x models the percent of the original area the map shows after zooming in x times. Graph the function. So similarly to the last one, uh, we have a table, we have a graph. Just take a minute and just look at the picture on the right. It looks like we're in Florida, which is nice. So the original area is in the top right. The zoomed in one time is in the middle right, and the zoomed in two times is in the bottom right. Let's use numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. The reason why we're not using negatives is because it doesn't make sense to zoom in negative amount of times. So like I said before, we're going to be plugging in these numbers for the x. So 100 times 0.25 to the 0 is just 100 times 1, which equals 100. That should be obvious because if it's not zoomed in at all, then it's just the original area. Now we're going to plug in 1, and basically we're just cutting 100 into 1 fourth, which is just 25. Just think of the quarters. Um, 1 comma 25. Now plug in the 2, 25, 0.25 to the second, and when you multiply that by 100 you get 6.25. So as you can see, the more times you zoom in, the area sh being shown is less because you're focusing on a smaller section. 100 times 0 0.25 to the third, that equals approximately 1.56. And lastly, one, 4 is going in, and that is approximately 0 0.39. Let's plot these points now. 0, 100. Oh, we should probably figure out. Let's go up by tens. And then on the x axis, let's just go up by ones. So 0, 100 is where it starts. And then 1, 25. 2, 6.25, 3, 1.56, and 4, 0 0.39. So you can see that this graph is going down. That's called decay. Oops, it's going down like this. I'll put an arrow at the end. And as I mentioned before, as the zooming is going in, the amount of area being shown on the map is becoming smaller. Now I wanted to show you what it looked like if we did connect the points, but we need to think about a real life application. Will it, will it make sense if we connect the points? And actually no, it won't, because the number of times you zoom in can only be a non-negative integer. So we're not going to connect the points because you can only zoom in a whole number of times, so 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Here's the lesson check for this section, 7.6. Feel free to try it now, or at least make sure you have 7.5 lesson check done, and we will practice these problems together in class tomorrow.